Today we're going to talk about rounding. And rounding is something that we do all the time. All right? For example, what time is it? You're not going to tell me that it's 2.43 and 32 and a half seconds, are you? All right? You might tell me it's 2.45. All right? How old are you? Well, you're not going to say I'm 16 years old and three months and two days and one an hour and 13 minutes and 44 seconds. Right? You're just going to say, well, I'm 16. Right? Same thing, how fast are you driving? How much is Bill Gates worth? How many people are in the world? How much is the national debt? How much do you weigh? Etc. So we do this all the time. There are all sorts of ways that we round. Okay? So why do we round numbers? Well, if I told you to cut me a board that was 18.02936 inches long, you'd think I was nuts. All right? You'd say, I'll cut you a board that's 18 inches long. All right? We really don't need something that precise. If I ask you what speed are you going, a police officer is not going to stop you because you were going 5.973 miles an hour over the speed limit. They'll stop you because you're going 5 or 6 or 7 or 10 or whatever miles over the speed limit. We don't measure speed that precisely typically. All right? How many people are in the world? Well, we can't measure that precisely because it changes instant to instant. Right? So that's something that we cannot measure. Right? So how do we round? Well, if we have a number that we have to round, we can look at we can look at the information that we have and figure out how to do this. All right. So, for example, here I want to round, but I'm specifically saying that I want to round to the nearest whole number. All right. So, the nearest whole number in my case over here is going to be this number right here. So, specifically, I'm rounding to the two. All right. And the 3, which comes after it, is what's going to dictate whether I round up to 13 or whether I leave it at 12. So if this number right here is less than 5, then I don't touch this number at all. All right, so this number would be 12 when I round to the nearest whole number. Now here I'm rounding to the nearest whole number, so I'm rounding to the 4. And I look at the number that comes after it. The number that comes after it is 5 or greater. It happens to be a 9, which means I have to take this number here, the 4, and I have to add 1 to it. So it's just like taking 14 and adding 1 to it. And so my answer here is going to be 15. It's pretty simple. Right? Here I'm rounding to the 7. Where do I look? Well, I look at the 4. The 4 is less than 5, so I leave the 7 alone, so I'm rounding to the nearest whole number, which is 17. And down here, this one's just slightly more complicated. I have a 9. I look at the 5. Since this is a 5 or greater, right? I, um, I go and I add 1 to the 9, which makes that a 0. Oh, well, what happens when I make that a 0? I have to carry 1, so that number is going to be a 40, right? Because 39 plus 1 is 40, right? That's it. Uh, let me make one more comment. You might be tempted here, you look at this 9 that's way out here, and you say, well, 49, if I round the 4, I have to round the 4 up because the 9 to a 5. We don't do that. All right? You only look at the one digit after the one that you care about. All right? You don't go out here and just continue looking out digits. You stop. Okay? So that's the way you round. All right? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to, uh, um, based on what we've just done, I'd like to uh, round to the underlying digit. Now, in this case, there are certain rules that we're going to talk about here. You'll notice this digit comes after the decimal point. So I'm rounding to the digits that, the digit that is underlined. So I look at the next digit, which is a 7. All right. And the 7 is a 5 or greater, which means I have to round the 6 up. So I have to add 1 to the 6, which is going to be a 7. So that's going to be 1,345.7. Still okay? Right? I look at the 9 here. The 9 is followed by the 4. Now you'll notice I don't care about these digits at all. I don't even look at them. I'm only looking at the digit that comes right after the digit I care about, which is a 4. It's less than a 5, so I don't touch that 9 at all. So it remains 849.9. I'm trying to round to the 3. Now here comes something that's a little bit different. All right? Um, here I look at the number that comes after the 3, which is a 4, so that tells me I'm going to leave the 3 alone, so I'm going to round and my answer is going to be 1, 3. No, it's not. 1,345 does not round to 13. These digits come before the decimal point, so I have to have placeholders for them. 
So instead of the 4 and instead of the 5, I'm going to replace them with zeros. So 1,345 rounds to 1,340. Notice it still says 1,000. That 1,000 word is still there, right? So this kind of makes sense when you're rounding. You're getting close to 1,345, just saying 1,300. Okay. Let's do another one where our decimal point, our, our number comes before the decimal point. Here our number's a 5. It comes before the decimal point. But this time the 7 is bigger than the 5. All right. So it is, is a 5 or bigger, so I have to go and round up, which means this 5 is, I'm going to add 1 to the 5, which is going to become a 6. So it's 8, 5, 6. And remember that I need placeholders for the 7 and the 3. I need to have placeholders for them. So they're going to be 0, 0. So 85,573 rounds to 85,600. As you think about this, you say, hmm, well, it couldn't be 856. It, would I rather have $85,573 or $85,600? Frankly, it doesn't matter. I'll take $85,000. All right. What I don't want is $856. All right, that's why those zeros are important. All right, so we have to remember to do that. So our rules. So we find the digit we're rounding to. If you noticed as I was doing this, I underlined those digits. If the next digit is a 4 or less, I leave the current digit alone. If it's a 5 or greater, I add 1 to the current digit. If the digit I'm rounding is to the left of the decimal point, then I have to add those placeholder zeros. Whereas if the digit that I'm rounding to is to the right of a decimal point, then I can just remove all of the trailing digits and not replace them with something else. In fact, I have to just remove them. All right, so I'm going to ask you to do some. All right, so here are three problems. I'd like you to round them to whole numbers, pause the video, go ahead and do the three of them, or at least do one of them, and then come back and turn me back on, and I'll go through each one with you. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we have 19.62. The 9 is what I'm rounding to. I look at the 6, and I say the 6 is greater than, it's a 5 or greater, so I'm going to round this up, so I have to add 1 to my 19. If I add 1 to my 19, I get 20, so my answer here is 20. Here, I want to round to my 8. I look at the next digit. Remember, I don't care about these digits way out here at all. I only look at the next digit. The next digit is a 4. It's less than 5, so I leave the 18 alone, so my answer here is going to be 18. All right, we don't want to do this cascading rounding stuff. We just want to round one place. Here you have a 999, and here you have a 5, so that's a 5 or greater, so I have to round up. So I add 1 to the 999, and that becomes 1,000. Right? Those are those three answers. Here's some more. Try to round to the underlying digit. Now you'll notice that the underlying digits over on the left-hand side of this are all after decimal point. And the underlying digits on the right-hand side are all to the left of the decimal point. So be careful with that, and go ahead and pause the video, try and work them out, and then come back. Okay, let's go through these. You'll notice that our first one is 14.645, so I'm rounding to the 4. The 5 is a 5 or greater, so I have to add 1 to the 4. So it's 14.65. Here I'm rounding to the 8. The 2 is what I look at. The 2 is less than 5. So I leave it alone. I just get rid of it. So it's 19.48. Again, these digits are after the decimal point. I'm rounding to the 5. There's the 9. The 9 is 5 or greater. So I have to add 1 to that digit. So it's 329.6. Here I am rounding to the 9. I look at my 7. My 7 is 5 or greater. Which means I have to add 1 to the 9. If I add 1 to the 9, that's going to give me a 0 with a carry 1 of a 4. All right. So it's 3,845.40. Okay. All right. On the right-hand side, I'm rounding to the 4. All the same rules apply pretty much. I'm looking at the 5. 5 is 5 or greater, so I have to add 1 to my 4. So it's 1 four, six, five, and remember that we need a placeholder for this because we're to the left of the decimal point, so it has to be a zero. Because this number up here is 14,645, so our answer still has to be 14,000 something. Okay. All right, looking at our next one, we look at the two. It is less than a five, so we leave the eight alone. 
So it's 19480. Here we're rounding to the 5. The 9 is a 5 or greater. So we're going to up the 5 to a 6. We have to add 1 to here. So it's 329600. This is 329,000, and this is still 329,000, so that makes sense. Right? Here I have to be a little bit more careful. Right? I'm rounding to the 9. This digit is over here. It is a 5 or greater. So I'm going to have to uh, add 1 to my 9 over here. All right, so I have 3, 8, 4. And notice when I add 1 to my 9, it becomes a 0, and then that becomes a 6. So that's a 6, 0, and I need placeholders for these two guys over here. So that's that number. And so let's see, this number came out to be 3 million. Does that make sense? Well, this number is, in fact, 3,845,997.44. So yes, this makes sense. All right. So you have to understand why rounding is important. You have to be able to round numbers to particular digits, and you have to understand when to round up and when to round down. It's your turn. Go ahead and do your, uh, do your worksheet associated with this. If you have questions, please come find me outside of class time, and, or even in class if you need that. Um, and we should be good to go. I'll see you in class. Have a great day.